Hi right, guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. We're out at night time, we've got Inglorious coming down and we're going to do a bit of a mixed bag sort of night. We've got a hand line, we've got a crab wheel, we've got a float rod and we've got a squid rod as well. We've got all sorts, so hopefully we can catch a few species. It's smash fishing, baby! Woo! Yeah. There's a big lady crab just down there. We've just got to the spot. This place is not easy to get to. But she is clear today. There's a big bunch of pollock down there. Check that out. That's awesome to see. There's life here. Hopefully, there's some big eels. So we're going to start the night off with the hand lines. I've got my rods with me just in case any squid show up. And then later on we'll be squidding. And we'll go after anything else we can find. Got a big old bag full of garfish. This is what I catch them for. Using them for charm, any sort of pot bait. And all I'm going to do is just rip it all into chunks, just for now, so I can get that scent out there. We're going to get it in the chum bag. And hopefully, if there's any congas around, they will draw them in, and we'll catch them on the hand line. What a beauty. We made this last trip. Awesome little chum bag. Let's get it out there, and hopefully we find some fish. Always like to have the hand line nice and ready. So what we got, it's just a little bit of plywood, some nylon string, a big old barrel swivel there with a nice big clip, 200 pound line, just to a big hook. And that is it. And all I do is get off a little chunk, chuck it on the hook and we're ready to go. As soon as we see a conga, I'll throw this out and hopefully we can catch him. There's a lot of lady crabs showing up. I can see quite a few down there, four or five of them, and they're all pretty big. And I've realised the wires broke on my crab wheel. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie this bait into here and I'm going to try and catch them. So if any lobsters come as well, we've got a good chance that we might be able to pull one up. We've got a lobster going into the crab wheel, guys. We've seen a big one as well. They're being a bit timid. Dano's here with me. He's on, he's in. I want him to pull his mouth into it. He's in. Yeah, wait. I'm trying to speak quietly. Head. Yeah, you got him. Got him. <laughs> There we go. First lobster of the day. It's not the giant that was down there, but we got a lobster. Easy. Yeah. It works taking the light off it for yeah. a bit, eh? Yeah. So taking the head torch off, guys, gave him the confidence to come out and get the bait. There you go. That's a fine lobster. That's a lovely little lobster. Nice and solid. But we want that giant one that's down there. We've been here for about an hour now, and we're still not seeing any congas. It's quite surprising this time of year, there should be quite a lot of congas in here. But this year it's, it's completely dead. There seems to be a lot of lobsters, so fingers crossed we can get some. If not, we're going squid. There's a big old conga down here, guys. It's about, I'd say, a good 10 pounder. He's got his head poking out the rock here, right next to my bait. I'm hoping that he will turn around. It's a lovely size eel. Oh, he's turning. Here he comes. I don't know if you can see him down there. I need to pull my bait back. Here he goes. Oh, he's going for the crab wheel instead. No! Hope you can see him down there, guys. It's just there. He's going into the crab wheel. Oh, he's found the bait. Look, he's ripping the crab bill bait out. He's got it. <laughs> There's a little small eel just down here. Coming out to investigate. I've got a chum bag here and I've got a bait out here. That conga literally took the bait out of my crab wheel and disappeared. <laughs> I'm hoping he comes back, but there you go. There's a little one down there. Just coming out. What they do, I, I couldn't get it on camera in time, but what they do is grab the bag and then they do something called a death roll, so they keep spinning. And that's how they take chunks out of large carcasses or big fish. Shame I couldn't get that one on camera. Hopefully he comes back. It's coming out for round two. It's a bit more murky now he's trashed it up, that's for sure. It's only about, I don't know, three or four pounds. He's only a very small conga. But it's amazing the, uh, the force they can give. He's heading off towards my bait. Hopefully he doesn't eat it. We switched up now, guys. Got a little squid jig set up on. I've got a float set up as well, so I might use that after. We'll just see how the day goes, or the night goes, shall I say. So we'll send that to the bottom and hopefully pull up a big old cephalopod. First squid of the night. What, already? Yep. 
There's anglers and then there's danglers. I wonder why you're all quiet. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, guys. Another species to the night. The first squid has been landed. That was on the little jig as well. Beautiful little squid, that. Perfect eating size, these ones. Lovely little creature. So we're going to give him a little judo chop. Been looking forward to eating some squid so we're gonna chew on this tonight beautiful size for eating the bigger ones are a lot more tougher so you have to tenderize them so these little ones they're beautiful eating dano's in yeah boy. hey <laughs> lovely little squid work, work. nice oh, another yeah. one down yeah quality chop did a chop oh oh jay did it <laughs> <laughs> let's get him Nice. That's two squid down. Nice little Safis. Dano's just left. He's left us his squid as well, so that's two we've got now. I, that's all I really want is these really small ones. The big ones I will use for conga bait. These, these are a really perfect size, about the eight inch sort of mark. That's perfect size for eating. Hopefully we can get a few more tonight. It'd be nice to get a few of these. We're at a new location now, guys. We've proper mixed it up on this one. I'm at the breakwater and uh, hopefully there's some squid here. It's went absolutely dead in the other spot. So what I'm going to do is I can see some small fish down there. So I'm going to put a little trace on there with some really small hooks, see what they are. And on the other one, we're going squidding. Going for a good old rainbow color now. Got some new jigs, nice new spikes on them. Got some nice new jigs at the moment. Hopefully this does the job. We're carrying on with the really small one at the top because this one really catches well. So keep that one up there. Little one, big one on the bottom. So there we go, guys. What I've got on here is just two standout loops that I've put on. And then I've got a little tiny size eight hook and a little weight at the bottom. So that's what it looks like. We're going to get a couple of little bits of garfish on because that's all I've got for bait. I wasn't really prepared for float fishing, but... Um, Hey, hey, let's see what we can get. This is all baited up, ready to go. Just a few little tiny pieces of garfish, two hooks. I'm going to drop her down and hope for the best. There's lots of little fish here. I don't know if they're scab, pollock or pelt, but we're going to find out. Fish on! What have we got on this one? Looks like a scab. Oh, a nice big scab as well. Look at that. Big chunky horse mackerel. I'll definitely take a few of those for the table. These are absolutely delicious when they're bigger. Check that out. What a beautiful fish. Hard fighting as well. And when they're this sort of size, Great eating. So that's one down. Hopefully we get a few more. The only float I had tonight and it snapped off. There was a little sharp bit on the rail here and it's completely snapped my float. Gutted. But hey, I've just lost a giant cuttlefish so hopefully we can land one of those beasts. Just caught a squid here guys. And there's more squid following it around. I'm hoping they would get the bottom jig. Nice. Look at that. It's a nice fat squid, that one. Happy days. There was another one following it. So good rule of thumb with squid, guys. If you see them following up, get it up and chuck them back out quickly because often, look at the size of that tentacle. That's a huge tentacle that's on it. That's a big squid. So often, you'll drop back down and you'll catch them straight away again. Straight away. Look at that. Nice. Here come the squid. Any more following? Nope. And look at that. Straight away. We've got another one. <laughs> Two squid right there. Beauties. These ones are a little bit bigger than the last ones. That's more the style we want to see. Lovely amount of squid. Beauties. 
And these, like I said before, these are the perfect eating size. The giant ones just ain't that great for eating. So these are the ones you want. So there we go, we've got our two in the bag. And now we've got four. And these are great bait size as well. If only there were hundreds around. <laughs> I think I'm going to give it another 20 minutes then go guys. The wind has come up seriously strong now. I've got to keep my back to it. And what I was using today is my pen slammer, pen regiment rods. Great setup for doing this. They've got a nice soft tip to them. So when, when a cuttlefish or a squid lunges, it, it absorbs it very easily. Fingers crossed we can get a lucky squid before we go. I was just about to pack up and check that out. What a lovely little squid. Another one down. Lovely job. I'm trying to keep the wind out of the... Uh, I'm trying to stay out the wind the best I can, guys. It is an absolute nightmare tonight. We've got a 25 mile an hour wind, but we're still catching squid. Look at that. Beautiful eyes on them. And give them a little judo chop. And we'll get them in the bag. there you go guys there's today's catch we've got five squid one really big scad so what i'm going to do so i'm going to go home now i'm going to put all these in the fridge and we'll sort them out tomorrow and we'll have a nice old cook up it's not a bad day's fishing that or a night's fishing shall i say it's nice to get some squid but roll on the big one so we can have a bit of a fight i lost a giant cuttlefish it was about i don't know two and a half three pound and it was just at the rim of the uh the drop net and it popped off i was so gutted we're happy to get a few squid. We've got our lovely sized squid here. So we had five in the end. This one being the biggest, but I'm gonna be keeping that one as bait. And I'm gonna be cooking up a few of these smaller ones. So all I'm gonna do is show you how to clean them quickly. Or like, I, I like to clean them this way anyway, is just get the mantle and you can get your finger right behind it. And then you can start pulling off all of the skin. Once you get your fingers behind there, it's quite easy to get it off. There we go. The skin comes off really easy once you get behind there. As you can see, that's your little cone. And all I like to do is run my finger down the back here and pull off the head. And what you're going to find is there's a plastic bit inside of here. All you gotta do is just slowly work this out and there you go. That's your squid pretty much ready. All you gotta do, turn it inside out and give it a good wash. Make sure you get lots of that sinew off. It's like a small membrane on it. Once that one's off, and there you go. A one lovely clean piece of squid. And with the head, all I like to do is just before the eye, where the tentacles are, cut straight across there. And then that is perfectly edible as well. You can see the beak that side. And all of that's ready to be cooked. So we've got our squid here guys, all nicely patted dry. I'm gonna keep one for rings and the rest, I'm gonna score the uh, I'm gonna score the meat into sort of a diamond shape and then it will curl up nicely and get nice and crunchy. And then we've got all the tentacles on the side. So we get cutting them up and we get all of our flour ready. You don't wanna go all the way through the squid. So just very lightly scoring it, just like so. You can see all the little squares there. And that will just help it curl up nicely. And then I'll do nice bite-sized pieces. I like to make them any old shape, I'm not that bothered. 
Now for the one with the tube, what I'm gonna do is cut very small, just little squid rings, just for a bit of variety. And you can cut these how big you like them. It's all down to per personal preference. I like it about a fingernail width. That seems to be a good sort of size for me. So what we're doing here guys, really simple, in the flour that we're going to dry the squid out with, we're going to put loads of salt and pepper. sea salt and what I'm putting with it is a little bit of smoked paprika and you can put anything you want in here all you got to do is give that a good stir up and then you've got a little bit of flavor in there getting all of my squid bits straight into the egg just like so and then straight into the flour. I want a nice heavy coat on these. So I'll be leaving them in the flour. Some of them I could even just dunk in again. And then back into the flour. And that will just give it a thicker coat. Check that out. And that will become lovely and crispy. And delicious. So what I've got here guys. I've got some yellow pepper. Some red and green chilies. A garlic clove and half an onion and what I'm going to do is get some Guernsey butter and some oil and fry this down nicely so it's all sweated down and we'll add that to our salt and pepper squid. The trick with cooking squid or cuttlefish you want to cook it fast so what I'm going to do is have my oil quite hot so the flour crisps quickly and I'll take them straight out and onto paper because if you overcook squid and cuttlefish it ends up like a rubber boot and then it's almost inedible. Our oil is nicely up to heat now. All I do is get a little bit of flour. When you put it in like that and it starts sizzling, you're pretty much ready to go. And there you go, check that out. Nicely floured. And all I'm gonna do is just pop these in there and get them nice and crispy. There's the tentacles. I'm not gonna overfill the pot. Just that will do for now. When they're nice and crispy, we'll take them out, get the rest done. Whoa, nice and crunchy these are. The next step now guys, you've got your lovely crispy squid there. Get it straight in the frying pan with all your different ingredients. And let's get it all mixed in. And get it all over the cooker. Yeah. And last of all, salt and pepper. And lots of it. So you're gonna have all those different flavors. The garlic, the peppers, the chilies. We've got all the Guernsey butter in there. Give it a good old dusting full of salt. And that is us ready to go. Check that out for a delicious plate of squid right there. Lovely and crispy, full of flavor. Can't go wrong with that. This looks absolutely amazing. What I like is that all of it stayed nice and crispy even though it's been in the butter and oil. That looks amazing. Let's get tucked in. So there we go guys. 
one lovely plate full of delicious crispy squid. Been looking forward to this. These squid are perfect size for doing this. Mm. Good old bit of lemon over the top. Well, definitely wasn't the most successful trip in the world. There was a big conga that came up. That disappeared as soon as it took the bait out of my crab wheel. That conga was gone. Mm. These smaller squid are amazing. You don't need to do anything to them, no tenderize them. You could put them in bacon soda if you wanted to, but you really don't need to with these smaller ones. The bigger ones definitely do need it. But um, quite glad that these are shown up first. So now we can concentrate on trying to catch those monsters. I think the best way to do this is to double dip it, because that's what I did with these. Put them in the flour, then back out into the egg, and then back into the flour. Definitely makes them a lot more, a lot more crunchy, that's for sure. Mm. I'm going to demolish the other plate of squid as well. Oh, it's so tasty. So stay tuned for the next episode. If you want any merch, the link's in the description. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, it's crispy squid, baby. It's smash fishing. <laughs> Woo! Now, 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 he's in. Yeah, you got him. Oh, he's out. Oh, what? He come through. Yeah, he swam through. <laughs> oh, no, he was in all the way to the surface. We just had a giant goby in there, guys. That was huge. <laughs> It's surprising what comes in this. Let's get it back out.